Hi. When I was a younger man, I felt like a badass. For 20 years, I was with the New York City Fire Department, working in the busiest and the best urban fire companies in the world. We employed what was known as an aggressive interior attack, took balls. And when my boys and I showed up, we did a good job. And there are people alive today that get to hear happy birthday every year because my boys and I did a good job. That's what I meant by badass. Along in time, Rudy Giuliani became the mayor of New York City in 1994. He appointed a guy named Howard Safer as the uh, fire commissioner. Rudy was once a, a U.S. attorney with the Department of Justice. Howard was the deputy director of the uh, U.S. Marshals. And uh, they were colleagues. They worked well together and they became friends. He appointed Howard as the fire commissioner. I've always loved to write, and I always have written since I'm a, since I'm a young man, since I'm a boy, actually. Howard read something that I wrote for uh, WNYF, our fire department magazine, and asked me to be his aid and speech writer. I was a little reluctant to leave my fire company. I was a lieutenant in Engine 5 at the time in the East Village. But it, this is an opportunity for me. It, it, it elevated my status. Uh, within the department, and I also got to see how a uh, how, how a, uh, a, a public safety agency with over 20,000 employees operated from the top. I also got to see how these two ex-federal big shots operated uh, as well, which was uh, which was a good learning experience for me. But what I most appreciated is in the year that I spent there in the commissioner's office. I did a lot of writing. He was paying me to write his speeches for him. Beyond that, I was published in several publications, including the New York Times, who paid me to write two articles for them. I left that assignment feeling confident enough to start calling myself a writer. Fast forward to uh, 2001. On September 8th, 2001, I began what I thought would be my retirement. Three days later, as I was flying to Hawaii with my brother Jim at 8.44, leaving in the morning, leaving from JFK, Jim and I witnessed the, uh, the attacks on the World Trade Center. We were grounded in Dayton, Ohio. I rented a car, drove back to New York, and went back to work. Over the next several weeks, I spent with my colleagues who had survived the attack, uh, sifting through the rubble recovering the broken remains of our friends, our loved ones, and our neighbors. I lost 20 personal friends, 343 coworkers, and thousands of neighbors. It wasn't unique. A lot of other people suffered then, too. But by the time I was finished, I was broken. I surely no longer felt like a badass. For the next three years, I dealt with the grief, the sorrow, and the anger, mostly the anger, of, of, of the result of that event. But I was determined not to be that old guy that spent the rest of his life uh, talking about, complaining about uh, where he was when the towers fell down. I, I was determined to avoid that, 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 avoid that. And what happened is I, I was fortunate. I, I've, uh, I practice yoga, a very intense style of yoga. And the more I practice that, it's, it's more than just exercise. There's a huge psychological component to, to my practice of yoga. And that helped me find forgiveness, let go of that dread, and, uh, and move on with my life. It took a few years to get past it. But by 2005, I'd kind of put it behind me. And what had happened is my practice of yoga changed me. It changed who I am fundamentally. I became less competitive, uh, less aggressive, uh, more prone to, uh, to, to compromise and, 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 you know, forgiveness. It softened me, which is not a bad thing. On October 17th of this year, 2024, uh, a little less than a month prior to the U.S. Uh, presidential elections, I detach from media, all media. It's an exercise I've done in the past. Just good to clear your head 
of all the noise and the rhetoric, especially before, right before an election when it's a particularly contentious kind of uh, rhetoric going back and forth, and I wanted to avoid that. I wanted to avoid the conflict. I had become very good at avoiding conflict. It was no longer something that I was interested in doing. Something remarkable happened. Number one, I kind of missed the rhetoric, <laughs> you know, uh, which surprised me. But I read a lot as well. And I read a book uh, by Mark Bowden called The Killing of Osama Bin Laden. It's a longer title than that. I'll link it, uh, I'll link it down below. But what happened while I was reading that, the book described in detail the process, the multi-year process of chasing terrorists and eventually uh, uh, cornering and hunting down Osama bin Laden. And I realized as I was reading the book that there was so much about that historical epoch that so affected who I am, my personality, how I feel about the world. It, it had a huge impact on me, that point in history, and I knew so little about it. I had developed my idea of what happened there from the movie Zero Dark Thirty which was a good movie, but it was fiction. You know, like the protagonist in that movie, Maya, is fictional. The uh, lady director of Bigelow, her name was, is, um, wanted to have a girl boss in her movie, and she used this uh, character, Maya, kind of as a literary device to pull the story together. Uh, the truth of the matter is, there was no such person. Uh, Bigelow also portrayed the Navy SEALs in a very stereotypical way. Uh, Bowden ended his book with a description of the SEALs who he met. Uh, he, was a, he is an excellent reporter. He got access to all the people that he wrote about in these books, including SEAL Team 6. And he talked in the end of the book at how surprised he was at how different they were from the characters that portrayed him in, in the movie. Uh, they, they were more lithe, thinner, uh, wiry, kind of normal looking guys and very articulate, uh, intellectual kind of individuals, very smart. Uh, they didn't fit the stereotype. I liked the movie. I thought it was a good movie and I have nothing against Bigelow, you know, expressing her artistry in the way that she wants in a film. That's her job. She gets to do that. She has that right and privilege to do that. What I was angry at is myself for allowing myself to have this um, image, this mental image of this very important part of my life installed in my brain from a movie, from media, the media that I was seeking to avoid. <laughs> yeah, I still let this mainstream media narrative be what I believed was the, uh, were the facts around a pivotal part of my life. Also during that period of time, I became uh, angry about what was happening in American culture, especially in the political realm, where young people, young, young people, college students and other young people were wearing those, uh, th th those checkered scarves that you see in, in the Middle East, worn by Palestinians, and they were wearing them and protesting in favor of Islamic terrorism. That made me angry. Not the kids. They're entitled to do what they want. What made me angry is they are being indoctrinated by our media to, uh, uh, it, it, you know, they're, it, Osama's uh, al-Qaeda is hobbled. I don't even know if it exists anymore, but it's, it's, it's not a huge, it, it's, it's not a huge problem anymore. The, uh, However, these Islamic terrorists that killed my friends and neighbors in uh, 2001 still exist. They still exist. They're still a threat. They're tribal. There are different groups. Some have more power than others, but they are very good at uh, manipulating media, and uh, they're fanatics. You know, they play a long game. They're not going away. And here they are still influencing the young people in my country. That pissed me off, frankly. Um, there were other aspects of the, uh, of, of the popular left-wing narratives that annoyed me as well, the progressive narratives that were clearly anti-family. Some of the things that helped me get through that dark period of my life was the love and support of the family that I have around me. And I have wonderful people, my daughters, my grandchildren, my sister, uh, all back in New York, 
uh, and 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 this huge Thai family that I'm now part of here in here in Bangkok, where where I'm retired, and and I'm so grateful for uh, the social structure that is family, and how much it supported me, and how important it is, I think, for our society, our global society. So to see a political kind of narrative that kind of pulls the rug out from under that, you know, recommending to people who, uh, who voted for somebody that they don't like that they shouldn't have Thanksgiving dinner with them, stuff like that, really annoyed me. So I came back. So what's happened? Here I am. I've returned. I've come back to the point I'm a good writer. I've established that. I'm proud of my writing skills. I like to write. And I've been writing. I have a small presence on X and YouTube that, uh, that I could begin from. It's, it's a modest presence, but it's, it's not monetized, you know, good enough for them to be paying me for ads that they run on, on my content. So I decided that it's time for me to take a stand, to um, shake off this, this uh, avoidance of conflict and get back in the game. And that's what I'm doing. You're going to see a lot of me. I mean, I'm doing this mostly on X, but I make videos, and so I may as well talk about it here as well. I don't know how the videos will evolve just yet. If you want to see what I'm really doing, go to my X, uh, my X platform, because I, I write every day about, uh, I do research. I'm trying to be factual, unemotional, bipartisan. I'm a centrist. I used to be a Democrat. I didn't leave the Democratic Party. They left me. I'm kind of like Joe Rogan. I'm kind of a centrist, left-leaning centrist. I like Joe. Uh, they're talking a lot about Joe these days because of how influential he, he was in, uh, you know, in, in the last election. That's what I'm doing. I'm back. I'm back as a writer, a commentator, uh, an opinion maker, if you will. I'm back in the conflict, and I'm ready to fight. Thanks for watching.